What up, people? It's your boy, Master Judy, out here with another jo- uh, comic review. So we got Batman number 98, which is part four of the Joker War. And you can say this is the most inspirational issue so far of the Joker War mainline. Um, I really liked it. And, you know, I had time to go over it again this morning and to go over it again this afternoon. And, you know, I just really liked it. So let's get to it. So we get back to the... Um, to Penguin's secret lair, and, you know, you have, uh, everybody's just hanging out, the villains are hanging out, Riddler and Scarecrow, you know, they're just squabbling, and, um, (laughs) you know, Penguin is like, um, Cat, he brought Catwoman down here, and, you know, they're watching everything that's happening on the news, he has his own personal bunker for everybody to know, pretty much chill while Joker is causing mayhem, and, you know, Catwoman, once again, Jorge Jimenez is art is fantastic. You know, she's like saying, this is all my fault. I gave him the weapon he needed to do this. I gave him the money to fund his war, Penguin. And Penguin's like, hey, don't undersell yourself. (laughs) You gave him the money to win his war. It's like, has there been any sign of him, Batman? No, the bat appears to be taken off the board. And you know, she's pulling off the bat, but it works in this case. I come on, Bat. The city's calling out. So, Bruce is in his mind, and he's talking to Alfred. And this is a flashback to when he's first constructed the suit. Like I realize that on some level, you realize how expensive it's going to be to keep a supercomputer from rusting out in a damp cave. Look, I want you to see something. I was rethinking the utility of the batarangs. I don't think they have to be just be shuriken by another shape and name. You're going to need more compartments in your utility belts. The whole suit's going to be a utility belt by the time I'm done with it. I've been talking to Lucius about miniaturization, and I think we may have to tell him the secret soon. So this is definitely a flashback of when he pretty much was starting out as Batman. But then, of course, like every compartment in canister could save a life, at least one life, and that's just the beginning. It's like, there's the part of you that still thinks it's possible even now. Alfred, your brain is reaching into your memories to find the right kind of optimism, and you want to desperately be this version of yourself. And so, it comes back to reality, still in his mind, where he's been bruised up, stabbed, and everything like that, and he hasn't shaved. It's like, I don't understand what you mean. Of course you do, Master Bruce. You have the keenest mind of any man I've known. It's like, and you know, he's like saying, oh yeah, Harley gave me some team. Yes, you're not real, you're dead. Yes, Alfred but you aren't. You've been given the gift of being able to step back from the accident, to take an aerial view, to see the big picture you haven't let yourself see. Man, Alfred's on point. He's giving, like, the greatest speech. This is why we love Alfred, man. It's like, you have no idea how long it'll take for Miss Quinn's concussion to purge talkings from your system. Now, if we're going to have some tea, let's do it properly. And we just see (laughs) Bruce is like, tea sounds nice. And Harley's like, yeah... Um, she's trying to figure out whether I got the doses right, so it's figured that she she picked up uh, how to probably detoxify Batman from the time with Poison Ivy, but guess who shows up? It's Punchline for round two. It's like, oh, you thought if Bat you brought Batman here, you could lure your old girlfriend out of hiding? That's sweet, but Harley, you should really should have picked somewhere a whole le- less, less flammable. And so, she's got a flamethrower on her. We got Joker War, James Tinian, writer, Jorge Jimenez, of course, the crew, all doing good. So, back in Bruce's mind, <laughs> it's like, tell me what you see, Master Bruce. Which tea am I pouring for you? It's like, it's your Darjeeling blend, the one from the cupboard to the left of the pantry. You keep it in a glass jar. You would bring it to me in the cave on the cases where I was most disturbed and frightened. It's like, you thought I didn't notice it was your way of telling me you knew I was afraid, but I wouldn't say it out loud, and you were telling me it would be okay. I tried making it after a month you passed, but it didn't taste the same. If only you studied under the great tea masters of your China, it's like of your China travels. If only. Tell me how bad is it. And then, you know, he's telling Alfred what the joke is doing. Like, he's using my family's money to tie up the legal system, to keep his gangs on the streets, terrorizing people, killing people. He's taken the fortune, the manor, Wayne Enterprises, he had Lucius poisoned, and forced him to help modify my vehicles into something deadly. He's going to kill thousands more after making them watch the same movie I watched the night I lost my parents. Gotham City's death bought and paid for by the Wayne fortune. That's actually pretty deep. And so... And then Alfred's like, you saw it from the beginning. The Joker lives in a cold, dead world, world, where you and he are the only real living beings. He mocks love and family by pulling his acolytes close to him. 
making a joke of your family, your relationships, but he just soon as put a bullet in their heads if that gave him the upper hand against you. He put so many lives at risk. You know you can't save the ball. And that'd be Punchline. But I doubt Punchline will be gone anytime soon. I say, because he knows you're his opposite. There is no difference to him in taking one life or a million lives. But there is to you. Now that's the Alfred we know and love, man. Alfred's my boy. He, that's This is great dialogue. Jorge, James Tinian, man, you... You, man, you a, you, you a boss, man. Meanwhile, <laughs> Harley and uh, Punchline engage in some combat. She manages to take Batman, drag him, throw him away, and she's just burning up the whole place. I love the art right here. You see the maniacal stuff right here. And she's like saying, it's no use, Harley. The toxins are going to run through the system for days of agony. Stop hiding behind your failed hero. And she's like, don't worry, I hide behind this gun instead. So she's firing a punchline. She destroys the flamethrower. It's like, you know, Punchy, I'm really starting not to like you very much. And we get a nice standoff stare-off in this picture between Harley Quinn. She's looking fly. Punchline, looking fly. But, you know, she's like saying that, look, you don't know the joke. I don't know how the Joker... It's like... I'm try trying to cut my throat was one open was one thing, but then you come to the burn down the only place I still like in this stupid city. I don't know how Joker twists you up like this. It's like you don't know anything. You never have. And I sure as hell don't need a flamethrower to kill you. Which is true. <laughs> she got her knives. Oh honey, I went suffering the last time. This time I'm not going to hold anything back in, of course. Harley gets an elbow to the face for her troubles. And she's not saying you just bought into your old hype. You don't know what you're talking about, kid. Of course I do. Everyone knows how pathetic Harley Quinn is. And, you know, she just goes about the history. You know, you're a brilliant graduate student. You met the Joker. You fell for his worms. You wanted to fix him. But you're, but she's too stupid to realize he was just a means to an end. And then she's like, oh, and what are you? I was in school when I, when I saw that world was falling apart and everyone was pretending it wasn't. And it's like, I felt like I was going crazy until I heard him speak. It took me a year to find him out in the world to join his cause and take down this fake society it took longer to prove to him i was serious which we saw on the 80th anniversary it's like i believe in the joke and what he stands for and i'll be at his side when he finally kills batman and we take this war from city to city until everyone has heard his message so punchline is unlike harley harley just wanted the joker to love her but punchline is a zealot acolyte of the joker Whatever he wants, she'll do. Regardless, she doesn't care. Meanwhile, um, Harley's like, you know what? I feel sorry. It's like, it's like, it's like saying, you know what? I feel sorry for you. You still don't see exactly that we're exactly the same. I thought Mr. J had a heart. You think he has a brain. Well, he definitely does. But he's not doing this for any of the reasons you think he is. He doesn't believe in anything. He's a manipulator. He's manipulating you. It's like, you don't get it. You want everyone to be as stupid as you. But then Harley comes in with the left hook. Bam. She dodges. Gives it with the kick. Bam. And I love this um, type of manga style. Uh, obviously, Jorge Jimenez is, uh, is definitely influenced by manga. And, you know, bam. Gives her that kick. This action is great. <laughs> and she's like punching down punchline. It's like saying, but definitely Punchline has touched the nerves. Like, I, I feel sorry for you, Punchy, but not sorry enough to, not to kick your, you know. But it's like there's nothing in this world he's ever going to care about more than that stupid bat. And it seems that she is, seems to be getting to her. <laughs> and then <laughs> Punchline is like, nope, bam, just punches uh, Harley out, saying, I'll prove it when I kill the Batman myself, pretty much. So she's coming for Batman. But meanwhile, back in Batman's mind, you know, it's like, we, I just like reading the monologue of Alfred because this is probably the best Alfred speech I've heard in any medium. It's like, you take yourself so seriously, Master Bruce, but Batman is a child's dream. That you can travel the world and learn every possible way to save everyone. And there is a part of you that believes you can. And that dream is powerful and beautiful. And you must hold on to it. But there's a weight to the promise you made to yourself as a boy. It would crush any other man, and has nearly crushed you more times than I can count. And since you lost me, it it's come to the closest I've seen. It's like, I'm sorry. No, boy, listen to me. Look me in the eyes. Alfred, man, you a, you a boss. 
It's like you have spent too much time trying to save my life because you won't accept that I'm dead. You have pushed away the people that remind you of that fact. You hold it against Damien, who sat in a chair, help across from me, helpless as it happened. Please, let this be the step to redeem Damien. You hold it against Richard, who has not, who was not himself to help you fight Bane. You hold it against Selena for making you feel it was safe not to come home for a lo for a moment longer, for not wanting to come home. And then you try to transform this city into what you thought I wanted it to be, opening the doors to the devil himself. And then he's like, I failed. And Alfred just like, take the slap, boy. Bam. No, damn it. This story isn't over yet. You are Batman. You need to accept the world you live in and accept what you can control. Look at Alfred. Slapping sense into Bruce, man. You need to accept that you did not and cannot save me. You also need to accept that you did not and cannot save your parents, but you can save yourself. And in doing so, you can save the lives of so many people in that city you love so much. Every life you save is a victory against death, against the Joker. I don't think I can do it alone. Then don't. Find your family. Find your love. Take back your city. Let go of the weight. Let go of the guilt. Let go of me. I, I wish we didn't have to, man. And do what you must do. Be the impossible man who saves all the families on their way home from the theater. If I wake up with my mind intact, I won't hear your voice anymore. I don't know that I can do it without you. And then Alfred's like, my boy, this is you doing it without me. I'm only a voice in your head telling you what you need to hear to steady yourself and do what needs to be done. You don't need me on the other end of a back computer to know exactly what I tell you in any circumstance. So wake up, my boy, and tell this city who you are. My gosh. My gosh. What a speech. <laughs> what a speech. Oh my gosh, what a speech. And so Bruce wakes up. He's up when he's telling the world who he is. He's the Batman. <laughs> Look at that, man. He is the Batman. And then he takes out and punch lot, of course. <laughs> so Hardy's like saying, about time, she had the whole sad sack story, and if I had to listen to another minute, I was going to off myself. And that's Harley. You know what? Maybe it's good I didn't end up a real shrink. And then Batman's got punch line. He's like, you got your head on straight? That depends. The whole place is on fire. She burned it up. Then yes, my head is on straight. I need to reactivate my communication systems. Saying, I think you fried your circuits back at the theater. Don't underestimate what I can fit in this belt. It's like, it's called a battery. And then Harley's like, no, you don't. It's like, computer, this is Batman. Give me the location of the family. Designate which members, which family members. And my guy's like, all of them. Batman's back, baby. Look at that. <laughs> Meanwhile, Selena's like saying, okay, I'm leaving. <laughs> then Penguin's like, told you that'd be impossible. I'm surprised Killer Croc is here. I wonder when he left, but that's neither here nor there. So I was like, hey, I told you that was impossible. Sake, it won't be. You're going to come uh, going to come along with me, and Eddie too. The other three members that the designer met with on that fateful day, just to let y'all know. And he's like saying, my dear, why would on earth would you think you could recruit us in super heroics during a Joker attack of all things? And Selena's like, well, what if I told you I could make you a millionaire? And that's that. So, oh man. I know where I gotta stop it. Right here, baby. Look at that. Beautiful. So this is a 10 out of 10 for me. This was the best issue of Batman I've ever read. And I strongly recommend you buy it and get it. Alfred was a G, a boss, if I've ever heard one. And that's all I can say. So thank y'all for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe, and hit the notification to make sure you're notified. Once again, I do these reviews for you, the people, because I want to discuss good comics like this and get your views on them. Thank y'all for watching, and I hope to have more videos up when I can. Peace.